Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss the topic of feature descriptors. So, in previous lecture, we discussed uh, the feature detectors like the blobs and corners, uh, which can be used uh, to detect some of the points of interest or regions of interest in an image. And we also extended the idea to more complex uh, feature detectors, which can be based perhaps on a deep learning system. Uh, so, uh, basically, essentially, the bottom line is the feature detectors detect some point or some region of interest in an image. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss methods that are used to describe those features in an image so that these descriptions of those features can be used for many different applications such as tracking, uh, visual odometry, SLAM, obstacle detection and, and similarly uh, many different other applications as well. So let's assume uh, we have this image and let's assume that we have um, some region of interest and uh, we have another region of interest. Now depending on what feature detector we use, for example, we can either use blob detector or we can use corner detector. So let's assume if we use a corner detector, we get these results. Perhaps this one and maybe this one. And let's assume if we use a blob detector, then we get results something like this. For So for example, for this, we may get a blob like this with center over here and the radius denotes the scale of the blob. Similarly, over here, depending on the algorithm or the parameter of algorithm, we may get one or two different blobs. So we may get either these two blobs or maybe we get one blob where the scale of the blob is again represented by the uh, radius of the circles or maybe the length of the principal axis of the ellipse. So now let's assume that we are working on object detection. So let's assume that we have 100 million such images. And in each of those, and let's suppose our goal is to differentiate between pedestrians and let's say cars. So we are just taking a hypothetical example so that we can explain the concept uh, of description to you. Uh, so let's assume that in each of those images we detect the feature points or feature regions and we describe those regions. So maybe uh, we select a small patch around the center of the feature point and we compute some function of those region. So similarly, so depending on how many pedestrians or cars there are in an image, let's suppose in each image there is one car and one pedestrian. Then we get uh, 100 million examples of uh, F car region and again we get 100 million examples of F pedestrian region and, uh, and during the training let's suppose we have a machine learning system so we pass these 100 million examples to the machine learning system for it to learn as to what description corresponds to car and what description corresponds to a pedestrian. So after the training of the system with this 200 million examples, we finally, let's suppose we get a new image where again there is some region of interest. So maybe it may have a pedestrian, or it may have a car and our goal is to identify what object this image has. So again, we form the same description F 
of the detected feature. So let's suppose this is the center of the feature. So we have a patch around the center. We describe it through the function f, which is our descriptor. So this description as computed by our descriptor will again be passed to this machine learning system and this machine learning system will output a car or a pedestrian. And the accuracy of the system will heavily depend on the kind of description we use. So if the description is not complex enough, not powerful enough, not deep enough, uh, then we may end up with a system that has very poor detection accuracy. So in an ideal case, a descriptor should capture all the complex features, uh, all the geometric configuration and all the semantic configurations of the pixels for the objects. And such a description can be trained through a machine learning system, which can be either uh, a deep learning system as well. For example, we can have a feed for a fully connected network as a, as a machine learning system over here. So the accuracy of the system will heavily depend on the kind of description we use. So the description is really powerful enough, really complex enough, it, it, it captures all the complex geometrics and semantics of the pixels, uh, then we'll have a very good uh, detection system with very high accuracy. In an ideal case, uh, if, 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 if we can uh, encode such a description, then the accuracy will be close to 100%. Uh, but the description is poor, that is, it, it cannot ca capture the geometries and the semantics of the objects uh, and, and cannot differentiate, uh, you know, between a car and a pedestrian, then obviously the accuracy of the system is going to be very poor. So the description is not powerful, then we may have a very bad, uh, you know, accuracy, maybe 75%, let's say. Similarly, we can extend this idea to many different examples. Let's suppose our goal is not tracking, or maybe feature correspondence in uh, as we do in SLAM and visual odometry. So let's suppose we have this image and uh, we have the complex scenery in this image. We have some static semantics in this image. I'm just uh, giving a random example. I mean, uh, to just show you the concept behind this. So uh, now again, uh, so let, let's assume our camera is moving or we capture this uh, image of the scene from two different angles. So now uh, let's suppose we run corner detector. So in an ideal case, we get these corners. Similarly, we get them over here. And again, there are going to be some noise as well. So for example, we get some noisy corner over here, over here, and, and likewise, there are some noise uh, over here. So now our goal is to identify which point in this image matches with which point in this image. And this is very useful in the depth computation as well. For example, uh, in stereo images, if you have calibrated and perfectly aligned the stereo images, uh, then our goal is to identify uh, the shift in the pixel when we go from left image to right image. So this shift is known as the disparity. So to compute the disparity, first we'll have to identify which pixel matches with which pixel in this image. And based on that, we can uh, for example, if you're talking about multi-view geometry, then we can find what pixels in one image match with what pixels in other image. We can triangulate them and maybe reconstruct the 3D representation of a scene that we are looking at from many different 2D images that we capture of the scene. Uh, in visual odometry, uh, we would like to compute the moments of the vehicle as the vehicle moves an environment, like what's the moment of the vehicle in the environment. And also we'd like to build a map as well. So corresponding these corners or these feature points across the images becomes very useful.
So we do this by forming a descriptor around each of the feature points here corners in an image. Similarly, we, we form all the uh, descriptors around all the detected feature points in this image, including of those of the noisy ones because we cannot know which ones are noisy and which ones are the, are the, are the true corners. So we can do this matching that is to identify what pixels, what corners match with what corners in the other image. We basically match their descriptors. So matching of these descriptors and identifying which descriptor matches best with which descriptor uh, gives us the correspondence between the pixels and, or, and, the, and the corners in the image. So uh, for this matching to be uh, very robust, uh, the description of the region around a feature point should be very robust. It should uh, be deep enough, should be complex enough uh, that it captures the underlying geometric and the semantic properties of a region around the feature point so that we can match the features com computed from two different viewpoints uh, which sh may share the same local properties around them. And the task of the descriptors is to capture those local properties. They may be geometric or they may be semantic. They may be any different property for that matter. So an ideal descriptor will capture all those local properties around a feature point so that we can efficiently match them or we can robustly match them. So the bottom line is feature descriptors uh, describe a feature point in an image uh, so that the descriptions computed by the descriptor of a feature point facilitates matching of those feature points across images. or when we are working with a, de a detection system, then such a description of feature points facilitates robust detection of those uh, objects of interest in an image. Detection or classification as our previous example was that of a classification.